I'll be back in two nights. Hey guys, Sam here. Today, we're going to do something different. Are you ready for this? A top 10 countdown! Yes, these countdowns have been done to death, from famous gaming personalities to ScrewAttack to WatchMojo.com, but I just want to throw my own English pennies into the ring of discussion. So today, we're counting down our list for the top 10 overlooked games. Basically, the following entries are games that are really good but sadly lack the large fan base and attention they honestly deserve. So, let's begin! Our first entry on the list is a platformer starring a rather familiar face. Now before I get in depth, tell me what great games are available on the Nintendo Wii. Super Mario Galaxy, Zelda Skyward Sword, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Donkey Kong, Xenoblade Chronicles, Wario Land? No? Released in 2008 for the Wii, Wario Land The Shake Dimension, or Shake It as it's known outside Europe, is simply put a remarkable title. In Wario's first adventure for over 7 years, you're on a mission across the Shake Dimension to save cute inhabitants known as Murphles. But why is he doing all this? Shouldn't this be a task for Mario? Well, simple really. The main villain of the game Shake King has not only caused an existential crisis by capturing the island's own princess, but also has in possession an endless sack of coins. And we all know how much of a greedy snob Wario is. The adventure is shaken up with clever gameplay, remarkable presentation and an awesome soundtrack accompanied with beautiful 2D visuals. And for the inner completionist in all of us, every level has lots of treasures and objectives to fulfil, greatly increasing the game's replay value. The only fault to point out is the crucial mechanic of shaking the Wii remote might irritate a few people and the game's length is fairly short, but apart from that, the folks at Goodfield did a great job crafting this title as well as production IG for the vast sums of animation. Ever play Kirby's Epic Yarn? The same team behind that was responsible for this game, not to mention the upcoming Yoshi's Woolly World on Wii U. Overall, Wario Land The Shake Dimension is a satisfying experience in spite of its radical departure from previous entries, and it's worth a quick playthrough during a cold, quiet evening. Please, go check it out. Bless. Yeah! Number 9 goes to Hotline Miami. What is there not to love with this game? Basically, it's a violent shoot 'em up from a top down perspective with graphics and music inspired from the 80s, and good lord, is this all executed in thrilling style. You wake up to a voicemail about the delivery of cookies to your house, to which you soon come across a package containing a rooster mask, instructions to steal, and then deliver a briefcase. Hang on, um, excuse me a sec. Huh? Hang on. I have no idea what on earth this could possibly be. Well, hello there, Samuel. I've been doing a lot of thinking and a lot of drinking lately, and I've come up with the best, most legit game theory ever, which I've proven to be true. Hotline Miami is, in fact, the long-awaited sequel to The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. It stands to reason that when everything gets crushed by the moon, they become flat, kind of like a reverse fez or something. Thus, when everyone realises they're all flat and shit, they get mad and start killing each other with whatever they can find. Obviously they can't do this and get caught, which is why they use the masks that were also flattened in the transition. Finally, throughout Hotline Miami, there are doors. Now you try telling me that there weren't doors in Majora's Mask because there is. Coincidence? I think not. 
And with that critical piece of evidence, we can 200% say that Hotline Miami is the sequel to Majora's Mask and the prequel to boxing on the Atari 2600. Yo, all you do the washing up, blood. No! Son of a bitch! Up next is Cave Story, a game where you go around reading stories inside a cave in a desperate attempt to resurrect an ancient colony of cavemen? Jokes aside, this game is really, really good. The main protagonist, quote, wakes up inside a cave with no memory as to how he got there in the first place. We soon discover that the village of Mimigas is being held hostage by some goofy doctor of sorts. Doc Brown? Is that you? Is this a new Back to the Future game in disguise? Insane theories aside, this game is a subtle love letter to classic platformers from Metroid to Ninja Gaiden to Castlevania, with an involving storyline, engrossing length and tight gameplay to justify your time occupied here. And apart from all the glitz and glamour of Cave Story, the best thing about it is probably the making behind it. Japanese game designer Daisuke Amaya spent 5 years working solely on this title and released it for free online in 2004, where it soon gained widespread critical acclaim. See? This is how you make an indie game. Don't be pretentious with your work, bitch about your fanbase and somehow rack up an ego bigger than 10 Kanye Wests combined. You ain't got the answers! I, you ain't got the answers! You ain't got the answers, Sway! Also worth noting are the many ports of Cave Story from Xbox to Sega Dreamcast to even graphing calculators. What next? Fax machines? Gramophones? Apple IIs? The most notable ports are the versions on the Wii and Steam, and for those wanting portable goodness, a 3DS version is available. It's cheap to download on the eShop, but physical copies due to rarity unfortunately demand high prices, so if you have one in possession, well done. Congratulations! All in all, no matter what shape, size or form you play, you're getting a one-of-a-kind experience with Cave Story. So much dedication was put into crafting this gem, and every second spent with it is absolute divine. If you've never played Cave Story, well, what the serious fresh hell. At number 7 we have more indie delight with Guacamele. Created by Drinkbox Studios, Guacamele draws its inspiration from Mexican folklore and culture. You play as the powerful luchador Juan, once a humble farmer until his village is attacked and his crush, El Presidente's daughter, is kidnapped by Carlos Calaca in a plot twist of M. Night Shyamalan proportions. Sally Juan is killed upon attempting to stop the ransom of Carlos, but is soon brought back to life by a mysterious luchador giving him unbelievable abilities like never before. Not only does Guacamele look swell, but it's also a blast to play. The combat is strong, boasting an impressive system for a vast majority of different attacks, the music is spot on with the title's location, and the Metroidvania symptoms borrowed from other platformers are faultless. The game's main highlights are its visuals, as mentioned a few seconds ago. They look amazing, visually pleasing and charming to the eyes with a bright, colourful atmosphere. In fact, the one issue I can say about Guacamele is the short length. One hour you're tearing the scene apart as Juan, and the next hour you're back to reality all bored as heck while reading a book about microbiology. The game is available to download on the PlayStation Vita and PS Triple, but on all current gen systems you can download Guacamele Super Turbo Championship Edition, which adds all the previous DLC and even some new levels and bosses to the mix. Overall, Guacamele is great, oozing with heaps of wonder and can sure make a rainy day, or hell any day, a whole lot better. If you're looking for a magnificent, short but sweet adventure, one will not be simply disappointed with Guacamele. Number 6 
Number 6 is a tie between Mighty Switch Force 1 and 2 courtesy of WaveWord Technologies. Yeah, I could be technically cheating here using two games from the same series, but come on, there is so much talent flourishing with these melons and I can't just decide on one pair. The premise is similar in both games. You play as Patricia Wagon, who's on a mission to capture a group of fugitives. In the first game, she assumes the role of a police officer, whereas in the sequel, she returns as a firefighter, making her the second most pimping blaze buster only next to Fireman Sam. All stages require your mind to think, as you can switch blocks and cannons scattered around on and off. These mechanics are cleverly used in both games, and they're only part of why Mighty Switch Force is so freaking good. Alongside superb nostalgic graphics, challenging gameplay, and how could I forget about the amazing soundtrack produced by the one and only Jake Kaufman. All in all, Mighty Switch Force 1 and 2 for the Wii U and 3DS are an impeccable duo, with everything necessary for a perfect puzzling sensation. If you ever want a fiery challenge, then don't feel shy about giving these two a well-deserved go sometime soon. Hmm, kicking innocent young children is a very serious crime way forward. You sick of me. <laughs> At number 5 we have Persona 4, more specifically the re-release on the PlayStation Vita. If I were to summarise Persona 4 Golden in one word, it would simply be huge. You play as a high school student, having just moved to rural Inaba to live with close relatives for a year. As you start settling in, making friends, the small town is struck by big rumours regarding the Midnight Channel, where innocent people are tossed inside TV sets. A key feature for any great RPG is to be fulfilling and diverse, and this game completely destroys those targets apart. There are so many things to see and do in this adventure with multiple side quests and everything can change depending on different choices made and how you raise your character up through school, jobs, reading, etc. The game overall is ambiguous, the exact game that will occupy your time and tear your social life apart in doing so. But when everything is this astonishing and smooth, it's easy to lose yourself and feel rewarded in Persona 4 Golden. Yeah, I know, it's a port of a PS2 game from 2008, but this portable rendition is without a doubt sublime. It even improves from the original title with better visuals and more modes to play with. And besides, you're able to play one of the best JRPGs ever made wherever you go. In the car, town, restaurant, on the toilet? What? At number 4 we have Riven Thief and the Emperor's Treasure. Are you a fan of Professor Layton, enjoy toe tapping games like Elite Beat Agents and Samba de Amigo? Well, you're gonna love this golden goose I tell you that for sure. Courtesy of Sega for the Nintendo 3DS, we meet Raphael in the streets of Paris as he continues to search for the mystery surrounding the disappearance of his father, around the same time the casket of Napoleon Bonaparte was stolen. This gripping story involves stealing artwork from the Louvre Rare Notre Dame to the Paris Opera under the disguise of Phantom R. I mean just look at this guy, the sheer amount of sassiness is undeniable, he makes Justin Timberlake his bitch in comparison. The gameplay largely consists of river related mini games using the 3DS's touchscreen, face buttons and gyro controls. Fleeing from the police behind statues, fighting groups of baddies, dancing and playing the violin as Raphael's love interest Marie are just a few highlights where the game's appeal to rhythm maniacs really shines bright. Like a diamond. As for the puzzle fans, the story is largely compelling. Riddled with suspense, interesting characters and a couple of puzzles thrown in for measure. With both elements of high caliber stirred up, the concoction you'll get is a fun gem like Rhythm Thief. The 3DS has lots of quality titles to take on the go and it's bizarre to see such an awesome game buried into obscurity. 
But with the incredibly low price tag associated with it these days and the recommendation of some daft English guy on the internet, there's probably no better time than now to enjoy the greatness that awaits in Rhythm Thief. The number 3 spot of this list goes to the masterpiece that's Bayonetta. Bayonetta? No? By now, the seventh generation of gaming has pretty much come to a close. Apart from a slew of generic first person shooters and gimmicky motion control twaddle, many great titles were unleashed to the gaming public and one prime example has to be Bayonetta. Published by Sega and developed by Hideki Frickin Kamiya and his little angels at Platinum Games. The story is a bit tame, apparently it's about a clan of ancient witches, one side is good and one side is bad, but that's not the point. The reason why Bayonetta deserves a place here is because of its eccentric nature. Filled to the brim with a deep combat system, gritty visuals and tons of creative ideas. Not to mention the ballsy, ludicrous bosses, finely tuned to give you an insane roller coaster of a game. Not only are the elements all superb, but so is the cast of characters. Some people might accuse Bayonetta as being derogatory and the character may be overly sexualized, but Bayonetta is probably one of the classiest video game characters I have ever seen. The lollipops, no mercy attitude, shoes with guns! What madman came up with this? Last but not least is the amazing sequel on the Wii U. Capitalising on everything sassy from the first game, fixing upon any issues, and if you buy a copy of Bayonetta 2, you'll receive a copy of the original Bayonetta for Wii U absolutely free. Also, don't forget the crazy Nintendo costumes. Seriously, I can't make this shit up. All in all, Bayonetta 1 and 2 are brave beasts that aren't afraid of standing out from the crowd, while bringing in a fresh spin into the sagged beat-em-up genre. It's not often that you come across such a flawless, unbelievable series like Bayonetta, and I'm hopeful for a great future lying ahead. Our runner-up for my most overlooked game goes to the wonderful 101. Everywhere you go, you see bright, vibrant colours. Even the cover art is a treat for the eyes. It's pretty much the artistic equivalent to a range of pick-and-mix sweets. And when compared to other games, the results can be astonishing, a day and night juxtaposition to some extent. Our story in Balamori centres around planet Earth being attacked by alien terrorists known as the Geth Jerks. And the only answer for protecting Earth are the titular group of balling superheroes, teaming up together to kick some serious ass and chew bubblegum in the process. Similar to Bayonetta, the saving grace of the wonderful 101 is its brilliant quirky nature. Eye candy visuals? Check. Over the top bosses? Check. A hilarious sense of humour? Check. And did I mention the music as well? Yeah, it's amazing. You know what else is similar to Bayonetta? The same man was behind both games. Hideki freaking Kamiya, bitch! The magic touch of Mr. Kamiya is definitely apparent in the wonderful 101. The combat of Devil May Cry is here, as well as a flourishing art style previously seen in titles such as Okami. And if you're dreaming for a new Vitable Joe to come out, then you'll be pleased to know that the Japanese Henshin inspired theme is also here as well. Henshin go go, baby! Overall, this game is incredible, aside from a poor demo and sloppy controls. When people praise Nintendo for having unique content on their consoles, they're usually referring to stuff like this. And once again, Mr. Kamai did not disappoint anybody with another saucy surprise. After watching this video, do yourself a favour and pick up a copy of this game straight away. It could very much be a life-changing decision. Metaphorically, of course. Obviously not, you know, in literal context. Taking the top title as my most overlooked game might come as a surprise. Whereas all previous entries were fairly recent titles, all brilliant but sorely lacking more fans, this game is one I actually remember from my childhood. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I bring you all the underappreciated relic known as Monster Rancher. Released for the PS1 in 2000, strangely as the second series instalment in America and Japan, this game came out at the peak of the virtual monster craze, with Pokemon, Tamagotchi and Digimon gaining worldwide stardom with adults and children. Judging by the title, you could have dismissed Monster Rancher as a shameless rip-off, conceived by drunk businessmen in Vietnam trying to make a quick buck off hot trends. But if you were willing to give it a chance, you'd soon realise that it is genuinely goddamn awesome. Throughout the game, you get monsters that can be mixed together as well as breeding, a lot like in Pokemon but way more diverse. However, in Monster Rancher, monsters are locked away inside ancient disc stones and believe it or not, can be revived by going to a shrine and inserting any CD into the PlayStation in one of the most innovative features I have ever seen in a game. Because of this, my dad's CD collection was often raided by me and my brother searching for unearthed critters. So now you've got your new monster, it's time to use their potential, train the bad boy up, feed it weakly and learn powerful moves by sending them on the rancheries. Or, as I like to call them, month long torture programs. You compete in plenty of battles and become famous as you destroy the competition in tournaments. Every creature has their own personalities and attributes they like and dislike, but eventually they grow bigger with age and finally, they die. <laughs> and I don't mean behind closed doors he went peacefully kind of dying. No, I mean sad music, blue faded colours and then it's ghost sadly floating away into the abyss. The first time this happened, we were in genuine distress and somehow had a real emotional reaction to a video game. Anyways, yeah, freeze that bitch to keep him alive and use him for multiplayer later on. And that, my friends, is Monster Rancher. The whole experience is stupidly addictive and was a favourite in my household, with all my brothers as well as myself raising our own crazy monsters. But good luck trying to find a physical copy. And so, because of its unfortunate status, Monster Rancher is our most overlooked game of all time. Monster Rancher is love, Monster Rancher is life. Well, that concludes the list fair and square. What's your most overlooked game? Do you know any hidden gems which have faded into obscurity? If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like, comment and subscribe to my channel for more great content. Until next time, I'll see you all later. Cheerio! Uh, just one question, Samuel. What? Why don't you believe what? my dad?